The jazz figure in the Autobots Stand United 5-pack has apparently been used a couple times before, but I hadn't been able to get one, so it's brand new to me. The accessories for this figure include one silver-painted gun accessory, and that's it. Behold Deluxe Jazz, based on the Studio Series 86 mold, but this time with more cartoon-accurate colors and no transparent plastic. The one's clear windows are now replaced, as with all the figures in this set, with opaque plastic, painted blue in the parts where they want us to think it's glass. The alt mode is a race car. Like many of the Generation 1 Autobots were, they had Lancia Stratos, Lamborghinis, Ligiers. So why not a Porsche? If you look at only the basic elements, you could say that it's just another car. Four wheels, a hood, a body, a spoiler. What else is there to know? But you say, Oh, death, you lugubrious lout, where's your nuance? And yes, the uniqueness for each car lies in the contours, the shape, the overall aesthetic, that je ne quoi, which lets you know when you look at this car that yes, this is jazz. Jazz's base color is white with a big old blue stripe down the hood and over the roof. Some more pin striping on the rear wheel wells, and the number 14 on both sides. Just so you know how many more times Hasbro is planning to use this mold. Gimmicks? Not many. There's only one 5mm port on the roof, and even that one doesn't work very well. You have to really mash his weapon into that port to get it to stay in. Ditto for any other accessory you try to stick in there. And the weapon is the only accessory he's got. There are no flip-out speakers like there were with Reveal the Shield Deluxe Jazz. Rolling on a flat surface, sporting his roof gun, that's pretty much all you can do with him. Technically, that applies to a lot of Autobot alt modes, but somehow with Jazz, it's a little more disappointing because we expect more from the Autobot with Meadowlark Lemon's voice actor. But to be fair, it's got clean contours with most of the seeming well hidden. The heft feels decent, and even from below, there isn't much kibble. The tire clipping is mismatched, but at least they gave him silver hubcaps. And the high rise spoiler? Nice touch. To transform to robot mode, flip him upside down. It's easiest to start by untabbing the car doors from the sides, then flip him right side up. Most of the entire car roof is one piece, with folds and hinges in them. The back windows tab into the spoiler, but you can release it just by tilting it forwards a little bit. And this gives you the ability to use the hidden hinges underneath to angle the front windshield section up just above the car hood. With this section raised, it's easy to use the hinges inside the rear of the car to extend out the robot legs. Then separate the legs, flip out the front feet, and rotate the wheel wells so that the curvature is pointing up towards the robot knee. Going back underneath the car, the robot arms were tucked underneath the hood. Rotate the car wheel so it's inverted. Flip out the robot fists from the forearms. You can see Jazz's head tucked in there. There are two sets of folding panels, one with the robot head attached, and one that maintains the contours of the car hood. Go underneath, push and extend this one down until it's nestled up against the car front bumper, then rotate and invert the section which has the robot head attached. Before going any further, you will notice that the robot pelvis doesn't have any kind of abs attached to it. That's because they're rotated and inverted. While keeping the upper body in place, rotate the ab section until it's aligned with the pelvis. Keep angling out the car windshield section on these double hinges to make sure nothing gets in the way. Then you can rotate the car hood section down. But be mindful. This section here now has to be angled back slightly to match up with these two tabs on the abs. Just angle them in a little bit so that when you finish folding down the robot car hood, the tabs and grooves will meet and lock in place. Rotate down the robot arms, then swivel the forearms so that the elbows point forwards. The car roof and windshield sections are still sticking out. 
towards the back, tilt the rear window section slightly forward so that this curvature is aimed inward. Then use these double hinges to fold the entire thing back. Then fold in the car doors and the entire assembly folds down to become his backpack. It's not too difficult and it all works well except that the double hinge sections at the back of the knees don't lock in and the backpack doesn't tab or lock in place either, it just flaps up and down freely. And this is Jazz in robot mode. They did a bang up job with following the generation 1 animation model. The car front chest is there, the distinctive double crested head, with Cyclops eye visor and robot lips. Gray panels on the fronts of the shins, and even the blue highlights on his... cod piece. The forearms are hollow where the fists fold in, and since the backpack doesn't lock in place, it easily folds up to reveal a cavity in his back. He does have a clean silhouette, and only the car wheel wells hanging off his shins could be said to be kibbly. But since that's how he looked in the cartoon, it's forgivable. Jazz can hold his weapon accessory in either hand, or he can hold any other compatible accessory from the War for Cybertron or Legacy lines. But the only other ports is the one on his back, and two on the bottom of each foot. So the options to customize him are limited. Again, it would have been nice if they had given him some speaker accessories to hang off the sides of his hips, or to somehow mount on the backpack so that he could blast sound from under his armpits like he did in the cartoon. With the backpack doors able to swivel out, it seems like they could have added that feature pretty easily if they'd tried. His articulation is standard with a ball socketed head that will do a full rotation, as well as tilting from side to side and forwards and backwards. The transformation joints allow the arms to be angled in and out slightly. Each arm will also do a full rotation. And there's an extra hinge which allows the arms to square out. There's upper arm rotation, a 90 degree bend at the elbow, and the fists will tilt in and out as part of his transformation. Lean the backpack out of the way slightly, and you get full waist rotation. Each leg can kick forwards this far before the parts crashing starts, as well as kicking backwards about this far before the thigh starts to budge up against the pelvis. Each leg will kick out about this far, as upper thigh rotation. Each knee is still on that double folding hinge, so you can get his legs to fold back in on themselves. Just be careful when bending the knees because the entire knee section will disengage. Looking closely, you will see both a tab and a groove on the inside of the knee. Those push together to hold the knee in place. And each knee has 90 degree bend potential. The front half of each foot will tilt down as part of the transformation, but the heel spurs are immobile. But you do get an ankle pivot hinge, which allows the entire assembly to tilt left and right. It's a standard array of articulation and perfectly functional. The only improvements would be a forward tilt on the feet, and any tilting at all for the heel spurs. <laughs> Standing at barely over 5 inches, here is Autobot Stand United 5-Pack Deluxe Jazz, next to Transformers Animated Deluxe Jazz. <laughs> Having never gotten any of the previous versions of this mold, I feel I was able to appreciate the Autobot Stand United version without any preconceived biases. One of my recent collecting goals has been to complete a team of Autobots from the original Generation 1 cartoon, Season 1 before the franchise got completely bogged down with so many characters that no single character could stand out. The Autobot Stand United set moves me a long way towards that goal, and Jazz was one of the figures I needed. Positives are that the robot and alt modes are a strong tribute to the Generation 1 animation model. It's well proportioned, well articulated, well detailed, the transformation is easy but gives good results, the paint is sparse, but all the plastic is consistently colored. The Porsche alt mode can't be faulted as a vehicle, and there are some options to accessorize. Negatives are that both modes have some hollowness to them. There aren't nearly as many ways to customize as I have seen on other figures. It takes a bit of fussing to get everything to tab together for the alt mode. There's only one weapon accessory, they didn't do anything to give him his jazzy speakers. The hinges on the knees need special attention when articulating to keep them from popping loose. Some parts, like the backpack, 
don't tab in at all. And those who have a thing for transparent plastic will definitely miss it. The Studio Series 86 version had more detail in the paint applications, which are lost on the Autobot Stand United reissue. But this is one of the best screen-accurate Generation 1 Jazz figures I've encountered in recent years, and he fits right in among my Generation 1 Autobot team. I give Autobot Stand United 5-pack deluxe Jazz 7 out of 10 deaths. How would you describe Jazz anyway, Tom? Oh man, if you have to ask, you'll never know. If you refuse me, honey, you lose me, then you'll be left alone, old baby, tell me more, and tell me I'm your own. Thank you.